Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here today. We praise the Lord for another Lord's Day to be able to worship Him. And of course, today is Mother's Day. None of us would be here without mothers. So we thank the Lord for you moms, and we thank the Lord for all that you still do. And uh, we want to honor you today. And we do have a, a gift, a small gift. It's in the lobby. And uh, Adam can point uh, any of the moms out to where that basket of goodies is. So if you're a mom here today, make sure that you take a gift uh, before you leave. And we also would like to just say thank you for all that you do. Let's go on and look at our theme verses for the year. They're found in your bulletin right underneath the welcome section. We'll say these verses together. We'll start with the reference. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. I wanted to say that it is a joy to be able to have um, some guests here today, and you are our special guests, and if we can help you in any way, uh, please don't hesitate to ask any of us here today. We're just so glad uh, that you are with us today. A few announcements that I want to mention before we sing, and I don't know, sometimes you just feel ready to sing, and I hope you feel that way today. Maybe we don't always feel that way, but uh, just one way that we can worship the Lord, we, we worship the Lord through a variety of ways, through, through our giving, through our ministry, our service to Him, and also through our singing. So I hope that as we sing in just a few minutes, kind of jumping ahead here a little, but as we sing in just a few minutes, I hope that we will sing with joyful hearts in praise to our great God and the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who is our Lord as well. So we are going to be having our adult Bible fellowships tonight in our youth Sunday school. That will be at 6 o'clock this evening. And uh, that gives all everyone hopefully a chance to take moms out and wives out to eat a nice restaurant today. Hopefully that happens. And then uh, we'll be back here tonight at 6 o'clock. I want to remind everyone, Wednesday evening, I hope you're able to make it. We have our adult Bible study going through uh, overcoming our uh, ministry to one another one another ministry that's what we're covering on wednesday night we'll also have our youth programs this wednesday then i want to remind all of our ladies about the spring luncheon coming up this saturday and that meal is going to be catered by long time and all the particulars are in the bulletin and i hope you'll be able to come and again the theme is supreme comfort um, pastor's wife mrs mary kinstead uh, will be with us this saturday and we're looking forward to having her minister uh, to our ladies Lord willing, next Sunday we will be observing and celebrating the Lord's Supper. And then I just want to point you ahead to the very last Sunday of this month. We are having our afternoon service at Rena Senior Living. And this is invited to everyone. Again, this is not in lieu of our evening service, but we are uh, having this as a ministry, as an outreach from our church to Rena Senior Living, to the uh, many that are there. There's, there's a lot of people that, uh, that live there, so we really want to minister to them. So come on out. Come on out and join us. This isn't just for a, a few people. This is for however many from the church can come. And again, as I've said before, it's a great opportunity, parents, to let your kids come. Um, we're going to put them to work. We're going to put them to work passing out songs, passing out scripture. If they want to play an instrument or sing a solo, let me know, and we'll uh, give them that opportunity. So it's a great way for us to get involved uh, right here in our town. And then uh, we're looking ahead to VBS. It's coming out fast. It's the very last week of June. And it's Keepers of the Kingdom from Answers in Genesis. And uh, we are asking if you have any decorations. We do have some that we've already ordered. Uh, a lot of posters and things like that. But if you have kingdom castle type decorations. You know, if you've got a suit of armor in your home, in your closet, you've been 
wanting to just get that out. Maybe wear it. I don't know. No, you don't have to wear the suit of armor. But if you have one, shields, helmets, that's what we're looking for to kind of help with the theme for the last week of VBS. And of course, online registration is already available. I mentioned it's a blessing. We already have some uh, who have registered, actually several weeks ago, from Janesville, uh, who do not go to our church. So that's a real blessing. I've had some um, some emails already asking some questions about that. So it's not just for our church kiddos, but it's for uh, everyone in the community. We'll soon have a, a eight-foot banner out here in the churchyard, and so we're looking forward to inviting all of Fort Atkinson, all of the kids. Please be praying. We need to be praying for this as a church. Be praying uh, specifically for that Friday when we minister to the moms and dads that many of them come. We have the closing program on Friday. We'll have a free cookout for everyone. And so we want to be able to minister to as many moms and dads as we can. So, But we need, we need you to be praying for this. Go on and start praying that God will work in the hearts of the boys and girls that will come. That God will give us safety that week and that he will also provide uh, good weather for us. All right, wonderful hymn to start out with. I'll ask Jacob to come and meet us. Amen. What a wonderful thing to be able to sing to our Lord. Everybody stand together with me as we sing number 453. 453. Who is likened to the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high? 
who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Our Father, we thank you for the word of God. We are able to freely read and proclaim this morning. We thank you that we have the freedom to read at any time of the day or night. We have the freedom to bring a copy of your word with us here to church. We pray, Father, that you would use, a, use your word today. Work in our lives, Lord. Conform us to the image of your dear Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, it would be the prayer of every Christian in this room here this morning that if there's one person in here and they've never bowed the knee to you, they've never repented, they've never turned from their sin and trusted in Christ alone, we pray that today would be the day of their salvation. God, please work in hearts, we pray. Father, we thank you for our moms today. Some moms, of course, are already with you. We thank you for their memory. We can honor them still. We can honor their memory. We can honor how they lived and what they did. But Lord, help us not to wait to give praise to our mom if she is still alive, that we should do so today. Lord, we pray that we would continue to honor those that we should give honor to. Father, we thank you for our church. We thank you for our church family. Thank you for establishing this lighthouse here in this community over 50 years ago. And we pray, Lord, that we would continue to let our lights so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Lord, may we constantly point others to our Lord and, and not to ourselves. We thank you, Father, for the blessings that are ours through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We come today with grateful hearts, praising you for the blessings that we do not deserve. So, Lord, encourage and challenge our hearts today through your word. We also thank you, Lord, for our missionaries. Today we want to pray for David and Valerie O'Gorman serving in Ireland. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to give them many opportunities to speak for you. We pray that you would keep them encouraged in the work that you've called them to. And, Lord, what a privilege it is to also have Tiffany as one of our missionaries, our newest one sent out from our church. Lord, what a blessing. We pray for her as she plans, as she prepares for this, as she starts deputation in just a few weeks. We ask God that you would give her wisdom as she prepares letters and emails to send to pastors. We pray, Father, that you would allow her to raise her support in your perfect timing. Lord, help us as a church to be an, an encouragement um, to her at this time. Father, we also thank you for our Church of the Week, Lighthouse Baptist, Pastor John, and his wife, Heather Schaff, and Eau Claire. We ask, Father, that you would encourage him and that flock today. We pray that you would use that church in Eau Claire to be a lighthouse for you there. We pray that many would come and be saved and serve in the church and continue to do your will. Lord, we're thankful uh, that your kingdom will not fail and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, Lord, as we desire to do your will, keep us encouraged that you are, are helping us and you are right there with us. You have promised to never leave us or forsake us. Father, we're also thankful for those in our church who have members in the military. We thank you for Anthony, for Dylan, for Jacob, for James, that you would encourage them today. We pray that you would uh, draw them close to you today. Please answer prayers on their behalf. Perhaps many of us here are praying different requests for these men. Lord, we thank you for the service men and women who serve in our military, all of the various branches. We pray that you would protect them from harm. We also pray that this weekend you would give an opportunity to a Bible-believing chaplain to minister your word to those in the military. We ask God that you would just give great wisdom and discernment to our Bible-believing chaplains. We pray for a real revival uh, in, in our military. Lord, we also pray for our church, that you would send revival to this church and may it spread uh, to, our, to, to our city, to our community, Lord, even to our country. So, Father, we again thank you for the blessing it is to be here. Lord, help us to count our blessings. Help us to rejoice in the Lord 
and to continue to rejoice in all that you have done for us. Lord, we also want to pray for the persecuted church. There are many in various parts of the world who do not have the freedoms that we have. And Lord, you command us to remember those that are in bonds. So Father, may we do so now. May we pause to thank you and, and stop complaining about maybe some things that we may not like. But I pray, Lord, that we would remember those that are in harsh environments. I pray that we would remember those that are serving you in the cold, ministering in locked doors, ministering in darkened rooms, doing this joyfully. Oh, Lord, may we learn from these joyful, persecuted believers to love our enemies, to pray for those that despitefully use us and persecute us, to do good to those that hate you. So help us, Lord, to look more like our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Number 54. Number 54. We'll sing all four verses of number 54.
be no children's church today. I know the bulletin says that, but it will not be today. Thank you for that wonderful reminder, needed reminder, Shem. When we see Christ, in the name of that hymn, it will be worth it all, right? When we see him. And of course, in that song, it reminds us to bravely run the race till we meet God. So may we do so. May God help his children to bravely fight, to bravely run the race, the battle that we are in. Let's turn in our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, the title of the message, of course, is in your bulletin, Living in the Fear of God. Living in the Fear of God. We'll talk about the fear of God this morning, and or the fear of the Lord, to say it either way. And of course, that's not just for the wife, not just for the mother, but we are all to be living in the fear of the Lord. Dave Lingle, church ambassador, one of the church ambassadors with the Wisconsin Family Council based in Madison, made the following statement. Our culture doesn't promote motherhood. We would all agree. Our culture doesn't promote, promote motherhood. In fact, because of its commitment to abortion, the culture discourages motherhood. Further, by approving of homosexual marriage, the culture has decided that moms aren't even necessary. Then the culture also promotes a woman's pursuit of a career as more rewarding than being a mom. On all counts, the culture is wrong, and we as God's people need to proclaim God's truth about motherhood and the blessing it is for women and families. I wholeheartedly agree with that statement by Dave Lingle. The church is under attack. Mothers are under attack. And so what do we need to do? As God's people, we need to proclaim God's truth about motherhood and the blessing it is for women and families. Proverbs chapter 31, really verses 10 through 31, gives us um, the following picture of the virtuous woman. When we say the word virtuous, think of someone who is worthy. Uh, a woman who is worthy of the praise that we're going to talk about she should be getting Toward the end of this passage, we'll talk about that. So this was thousands of years ago, written of course, but in chapter 31, verses 10 through 31, the following picture gives us a lot of uh, characteristic about this woman, right? In verse 13, 13a, she gathers raw material, right? She, she trades in verse 14. She performs ag or agricultural activities, right, in verse 16. She spends, right, in verse 19. She, she sows for the household, verse 21. She sows for others, verse 24. And she sows for herself, verse 22. In verse 12, what do we learn from her? That she is consistent. She's consistent by God's grace, right? In verse 26, we learn that she trains her children. In verse 20, we learn that she is charitable. In verse 13, we learn that she is joyful. In verse 21, we learn that she prepares for emergencies. In verse 16, we learn that she invests. And in verse 18, we learn that this woman, this virtuous woman, in verse 18, is content. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. She's satisfied. She's content. And then, in verse 25... She is confident in the Lord. Our Bibles say she shall rejoice in time to come. And a wonderful paraphrase of that phrase is the fact that she smiles at the future. I mean, she's been planning. She's industrious. We know all of those things. She's preparing for emergencies. And so with that confidence then in the Lord, she smiles at the future. She rejoices in time to come. So I do want to speak really at the, for, at the end of this passage is what I want to dwell on this morning, uh, primarily verses 28 through verse 31, because it describes the virtuous woman's relationship with God. It describes her relationship with God. Let me just read verse 28 through 31. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. 
Many daughters have done virtuously. Again, a virtuous woman is mentioned in, in verse 10. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So give her, give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. So here is a woman, again it's clear, that she fears God. She fears, Lord is all caps, it's Yahweh, she fears God. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Let me read one paraphrase, if I would, if I could, from verse 30 and 31. One paraphrase. Said it like this. Popularity and glamour is shallow. But a woman who has personal contact with the holy God, she shall be praised. She shall receive greater satisfaction from her labors, and others shall talk about her good deeds wherever they go. Alright, right? So what's shallow? We'll talk about that in a moment. What is shallow favor or popularity? What else is shallow? Beauty or glamour? Here is a woman who dwells on what is lasting. She dwells on what is eternal. She dwells on what is what should be all of our, not just women, not just mothers, but all of our priority. Number one, to fear the Lord. Living in the fear of the Lord is a major theme in the book of Proverbs. It's mentioned about 17 times. And the New Testament actually uses the phrase too. Acts chapter 9 and verse 31. So you have the early church here, right? The early church way, uh, way back in the New Testament in Acts chapter 9. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord. And in the comfort of the Holy Spirit were multiplied. How do they walk? In the fear of the Lord. We're going to talk about what all that means and what it doesn't mean in just a little bit. It's not just for the Old Testament, for the New Testament as well. We have a verse in our bulletin from Proverbs 23 and verse 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners. Now, if we do that, we're not going to fear God, right? Because sinners are going to be first, right? We're going to want what they want. We're going to want to do what they do. We're going to want to copy them and not copy our Lord Jesus Christ. So let not thy heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Kind of sounds like Acts 9.31, right? Walking in the fear of the Lord. Is that a priority in our lives? We'll talk about what it means to, to walk in the fear of the Lord, to live in the fear of the Lord. It ultimately means that we want to obey God. And we will. And we will follow Him no matter what. Living in the fear of God. There is value... In wisdom, there is value or worth in this type of a woman and not just a woman. All of us are to live in the fear of God. How this woman looks is not the primary reason to praise her. Let me say that again. How this woman looks is not the primary reason to praise her. That is exactly, we'll get back to verse 27 in a few moments, but that is exactly what, again, thirty verse 30 says. She excels them all in verse 29, and then favor is deceitful, beauty is vain. Now, don't we all know that externals change throughout our lives, right? I mean, we change. We do. Just look at a picture of you if you're this old, this, this old, yeah, 25 years ago, right? I've changed. I had a lot more on top 25 years ago, right? I wasn't wearing readers 25 years ago. Externals change. We have to just get over it if we think that's never going to apply to us, right? Externals do change. The woman, how she, how she looks is not the primary reason to praise her. There's no, can I say it this way, there's no lasting quality in externals. There's no lasting quality in externals. But internals, that's a completely different matter, a completely different topic. One commentary that I read and regarding Proverbs 31, the author stated, stated it this way. <laughs> Beauty does not guarantee character. What an important truth. Beauty does not guarantee character. In fact, 
Beauty may, let me emphasize and bold that word may, in fact, beauty may indicate the weak character of one who overemphasizes the development of the external appearance at the expense of the inward development of the soul. The surface may be an illusion, a mirage that detracts from the far more important quality of character. Amen. Amen. That's so true. Beauty does not guarantee character. For, for women, mothers, this is not just some list for you to say, all right, am I living up for this? But I really believe it can also be for guys who haven't yet married. What kind of a woman am I looking for? What are some, some qualifications that should be true about her? Again, knowing that externals are going to change. They, she will not look the same at 80 as she did at 20. Externals change. But this doesn't need to change, right? This doesn't need to change. What is it? And it needs to be true for all of us. A woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. He ends with that. In this, all of these qualities, all of these characteristics about this, this woman, he ends with the fact that she, the reason we are to praise her is primarily for the fact that she fears the Lord. And she's concerned about that. And, and it's a priority to her. A priority. Fear the Lord. Psalm 111 and verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. The old expression, talk is cheap. Anybody can say anything. A pastor can say anything. But it's how the pastor lives. That's what you should be noticing. Because I can say anything, but it does my life match what my lips are saying. And that's the same for all of us as Christians. Does our life match what our lips are saying? So this is really... A passage where, I, again, I just want to hit on the last few verses because it describes the virtuous woman's relationship with her God. Her relationship with her God. Here was a priority for her, that she fears God. She fears the Lord. Who or what is a priority in our lives? Who's first? Or what's first? Right? Someone said it like this, you can open up your checkbook ledger, I know that's talked from maybe decades ago, but you open up your checkbook ledger and you can find out who your God is. There's a lot of truth in that. Who's first in our lives? Priority for the virtuous, the, the woman worthy of praise, worthy because she has worth, but we, why does she have worth? Because she prioritizes the Lord. Who or what is a priority for you? Is church a priority? Meeting here together? I know some on occasions they have to be at work. Some on occasions we, we get sick. We all do. My, my daughter, my youngest, is sick today, so my wife is home with her. People get sick, right? It's another external that will not change. But is it our priority, right? Do we say, well, if, if I'm not doing this and if I'm not doing this, I'll see if I can sneak in a service, right? If that's the case, the Lord is a priority in your life. Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first, not second, not third, not fourth, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first. So is it a priority for us? Not, we're not dwelling on the externals, but we're dwelling on the spiritual. We're dwelling on our relationship with God. Is that first right now in your life? Boy, so many things can come up and override that and trump that, right? So many things can just push the Lord aside. That's where we've got to be on guard. That's where we've got to be careful. Is it our ultimate priority? Men, is it our ultimate priority to put God first and then to lead our wives, to lead our children in doing just that? Men, is it true of us? This is not just for women to fear the Lord. This is for men as well. Who or what is a priority in our lives? Things can get in the way. Money can get in the way. Sometimes work can get in the way. Who or what is a priority in our lives? Again, I understand that things happen sometimes. Things break. 
we got to be there to fix them. The ox is in the ditch, that kind of a thing. That's scriptural, right? But is it a priority? Do we make all the excuses in the world and then say, then, Lord, if, if none of this is going on, then maybe I'll speak in a service once a week, right? Is the Lord really a priority in our lives? Fear the Lord. What does this phrase not mean? Let's just talk about this for just a moment. What does this phrase not mean? It doesn't mean this, I'm afraid of God, right? It doesn't mean I'm terrified of God. That should not be. Well, you know what? As Christians, we should serve God out of love, not fear. We are His children. I mean, we are His sons and daughters serving out of love. In fact, John the Apostle says this in 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So, I, I, you know what? I don't serve God because I think if I, if I mess up, He's going to blast me with a bolt of lightning. Have you ever heard that? I mean, I don't serve God that way. I hope you don't either. I serve Him out of love. I serve Him by, because of what He did for me. Because of, for God so loved the world. He said Jesus Christ died on the cross so that I could be a child of God. So that you could be a child of God. So that we could be children of God. We're serving them out of love, not out of fear. Again, Jesus speaks of this in the Sermon on the Mount. He is totally unlike any earthly father ever, ever, that ever existed, that ever will. God is not like any of our earthly fathers. <coughs> serve Him. And Christians, serve Him out of love. After all, right, here's a chorus. After all He's done for me. After all He's done for me, how can I do less than give Him my best and live for Him forever after all he's done for me so that's what the phrase does not mean it doesn't mean i'm afraid to serve god i don't know what if i mess up what if i don't do something right he's so holy and i'm so sinful and that's true <laughs> but he also is forgiving he also is a god of mercy and a god of grace so he wants us to serve him out of love so what does this phrase the fear of god and the fear of the lord mean then what does it mean we serve him out of love when we say we serve or, or we fear the Lord, it means a, this is an attitude of worship. It's reverential submission to the Lord. You know what it means? We want to obey Him. It simply means we fear displeasing Him. There's a difference. We don't, we don't fear God, but we do fear displeasing Him. What else does it mean? Very practical here. We don't want to do the things that God hates. We're going through that on Wednesday night with our one another in series. We're going through the, the, the seven things in Proverbs 6 that God hates. And so, if God doesn't want me to do this, to live this way, to be this way, to act this way, to have this ungodly attitude, then I won't fear Him. I'm afraid of displeasing Him because I love Him. I want to follow Him. I want to do His will. So we should desire to live for Him and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Proverbs 1.7, as I mentioned, the Proverbs say a lot about the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1.7 is one of those verses. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Oh, and Solomon commands his son in Proverbs 24.21, my, my son... Fear the Lord. My son, fear the Lord. Are we fearing the Lord? Is it a priority in our life to obey Him? Or maybe we're like the, the, the woman in verse 30, or maybe we're focusing not on what she's focusing on, right? We say it that way. Maybe we're focusing on the favor or the beauty, the glamour, right? The, the popularity. Maybe we're focusing on the wrong things. And it may not even be there in verse 30, right? It may not be one of those two. It may be something else. But are we focusing on that instead of focusing on what does God want me to do? I mean, right? How does He want me to live? What does God want me to do in this situation? What does God want me to do about this job, about this, this wife, about this, this husband? What does God want me to do? The world will say one thing, right? God, many times... Maybe most of the time, we'll say another. The world tries to get you to do one thing, and you know, friends on Facebook or Twitter or whatever are saying, you, you should just do this, right? This is what I would do, right? 
This is what I would do instead of us going to the Bible and saying, all right, Lord, I fear you. I, I fear displeasing you. So this is a great concern to me. This is a priority that I fear the Lord. And so help me. I need wisdom. I want to obey you. I want to follow you. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman and all Christians that fear the Lord shall be praised. So just as important, what does the fear of God do? And we've touched on that a little bit. So is it a priority, fear the Lord, and then how do we you know, live in the fear of God, right? Because that's, that's the title. Living in the fear of God. How, how do we do that? Well, what does it do? What, what does the fear of God do? Well, it opposes wickedness. We know that. It opposes wickedness. And what else? Well, it hates evil. If we are consumed with fearing God, living for Him, then we're going to hate evil. Why? Because we are fearful of displeasing God. Do we ever wake up and say, Lord, I don't want to sin today? Do we, do we ever wake up and say, God, help me to, to live in a way that's pleasing to you today? I have to live in this world. I'm in the world. I'm not to be of the world. And Lord, it's, it's difficult. I'm, I'm, I'm human, right? I'm, I'm saved. I, I've been forgiven, but I'm human. And so I still deal with this old flesh, right? Every day. That's what Paul talks about in Galatians. There's a battle, right? There's a battle going on between the flesh, what we want to do, and what God's Spirit wants to do in us. So what does the fear of God do? It hates evil. Proverbs 16, 6, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Hmm. By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. One of those evils or sins is mentioned in Proverbs 3, 7. And also, not only mentions the sin, but also mentions the fear of the Lord. Right? Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. This is one kind of evil that's mentioned in Proverbs 6. It's one of the seven that's mentioned that, that God hates. So the fear of the Lord, if we're fearing God, all right, that's going to make us not want to contribute to sin or to contribute to evil. Listen to Proverbs 8 and verse 13. The fear of the Lord is, all right, equals to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth. Do I hate? Right? These are things that God hates. Mentioned in Proverbs 6, 17 through 19, but also mentioned here in Proverbs 8 and verse 13. So, to fear the Lord, the fear of the Lord, excuse me, the fear of the Lord equals, right, hating evil. So if we say, yeah, I'll fear God, all right, how's our pride, right? Am I, am I walking and living in the fear of the Lord? If I am, then, then I'm going to walk in a humble way before God. And God raises up the humble, remember, but He does bring down those that are prideful. So what does the fear of God do? It's just as important as what it is. It opposes wickedness. It hates evil. Again, why is this woman worthy of praise? Why is she described as a virtuous woman? It's because she is spiritually minded. Yes, she did a lot of those things that I've already read the list, right? You can read them later on too. Yes, she does all those things. But primarily here in verse 30, she is virtuous because she is spiritually minded. She seeks a right relationship with God. She seeks a right relationship or a right standing before God. So the priority is fear the Lord. And that's what this woman recognizes. I, I can't help the, the way I change externally, right? It's, it's, it's just going to happen. <laughs> we live in a cursed world, right? It's just going to happen to all of us, okay? So let's just focus on what lasts? Our relationship with God. Let, let's just do that. Let's just stop focusing on things that really, for all practical reasons, don't matter. Focus prioritize the fear of the Lord. So the result, again, our main focus is the fearing the Lord. And what is the result? It's mentioned. The result is praise. And that's what we'll look at in just a couple of minutes. There are rewards to those who fear the Lord. God gives gifts. Proverbs 22, 4, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor 
life. Perhaps spiritual riches is implied there more than anything. But God does bless. God does provide. He does. Keep following Him. The Lord provides for His children who follow Him. The result. What is one res another result, right, of fearing the Lord? Well, one is mentioned in Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. And even Proverbs 10 and verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So just really uh, the idea of a, of a full life. And yes, people die and people go to be with the Lord at, at young ages too. Missionaries, we talked about that a little bit on Sunday night. David Brainerd at 29, Eric Little at 43. And so yes, it doesn't mean that you're going to live a long life, but your life is full, full of the Lord's blessings. And that can happen even at death at 29 or death at 99. So the implication here then is that there are rewards that God alone gives when we fear Him, when we do right, man. When we do right, when we do the right thing, church. What about another result? What about Proverbs 14, 26? In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and His children shall have a place of refuge. Another, another result, really, of fearing the Lord is confidence, trust. I, I did right. You know, last time, and it was difficult, it was hard, and everybody else in the world seemed like they wanted me to do the wrong thing, but I did the right thing. And so, you know what? God bless that. I didn't know. I didn't know how He would when I, when I was there, but He blessed it. And I'm telling you one thing, I've learned from that. So I'm telling you one thing, I'm going to do the same thing I did last week. I'm going to do it again this week. I'm going to fear the Lord. In the fear of the Lord, Proverbs 14, 26, is strong confidence, boldness in the Lord. Courage to do the right thing. Don't you love that ending? And his children shall have a place of refuge. Let me just mention one more. Contentment. When we fear the Lord, Proverbs 15, 16. Better is little with the fear of the Lord. In other words, may I have a whole lot, but I'm fearing God. I'm doing the right thing. I'm honoring Him. I'm living for Him. I'm doing right. God knows. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure, right? And trouble. Therewith. Sometimes treasure brings trouble, right? Sometimes. Another verse on, on contentment, Proverbs 19, 23. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. So the fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that has, has it, be satisfied. Just like the, the virtuous woman was, as we've already read. So contentment, when we fear God. Are you at peace right now? You know what? It may just be that you just need to obey God. Just, it, just that simple, right? It may just be that you're not obeying God. That's why you have no peace. Someone has said, peace rules the day when Christ rules the heart. Peace rules the day when Christ rules the heart. Well, let's just look at a, a few in the family and outside of the family that should be that should be honoring this virtuous woman who fears the Lord. She wants to do right. She wants to do the right thing for her husband. She wants to do the right thing for her children. Her focus is not on the externals primarily, but her focus is on the Lord. And it says she shall be praised. She shall be praised. So she is honored by her family. She is honored by her immediate family, the husband. We'll look at him first, right? The husband, her husband also, verse 28. And he praiseth her. He praiseth her. Men do we. Do we praise our wives? Do we thank our wives, moms of our children, uh, for all that they do? Do we praise them? Do we? Men, we should never compare our wives to any other woman at any time. Men, we should never compare, I'm saying it again, I know, I'm repeating it. I'm not losing it yet. <laughs> Men, we should never compare our wives to any other woman at any time. In any way. Right? Pointing out some ability she lacks or some 
characteristic, some quality or feature you prefer in reference to another woman. You know what that can do? That can be devastating. It can be devastating. Instead, how, what, what should we do? Lead the way. Lead the way in complimenting instead of, instead of criticizing. Right? Because that's, that's what we should be doing. Her husband praises her. All right? Now, we don't live thousands of years ago with all of this sewing and stuff going on. So, men, you can't say, well, she doesn't darn my socks or whatever still. No, go to Goodwill and get a pair of socks for 50 cents, right? <laughs> men, do we praise our wives? Do we praise them, right? And, and we're very critical at times. Men, do we give her attention? You know, come home from work or whatever, and you want to crash, you want to look at something else, and your wife, the mother of your children, wants to talk to you. And we're focused on what we've got going on, right? It used to be the newspaper, right? And, you know, not many people get the newspaper these days. But in your phone, your computer, some new tool you got, right? Instead of stopping what you're doing and giving her attention. Why? Because the husband is to praise a godly wife. The husband is to praise her, not criticize her, not be critical, ultra-critical. My mom would never do that, right? Why are you doing that? My mom was a great cook. What happened to you, right? These things are not praising her. These things are very critical. These things don't help marriage. Right? So praise her. And by the way, who's watching? Could be kids at home, right? Could be kiddos just two feet away, right? They're watching how dad acts. Someone said the most important thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother. The most important thing a father can do for his children is to love their mother. May I say it's probably also true with a, a grandpa, right? Who may have grandkids around, you know, sometimes, right? Keep loving, keep ministering, keep praising. It's the greatest thing we can do. By the way, it's encouraging for our wives. Helps our wives to know that they're loved, they're appreciated, and they are greatly needed. So husbands, I know I dealt a long time with husbands because I am one. So husbands, he expresses, he expresses appreciation for all of her accomplishments. Don't be little her, right? Guys, we can't. It doesn't help. Strengthen her. Build her up. Praise her for all of the things that she does for you. She's honored by her immediate family. She's honored by her husband. She's honored by her children, right? Children... Are you doing this? You know, honor your father and your mother. Ephesians 6 1. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right and well pleasing unto the Lord. Children, it says not only the husband, but children. How do, how do children how do children praise? Her children rise up. They call her blessed, verse 28 says. One way, of course, for children still in the home, younger children, would be just by that respect. That honoring father and mother as well. And of course, it's one of the Ten Commandments to honor your father and your mother. So children, you know, and I, I have a mom who lives in South Carolina now, so I'm going to be calling her this afternoon. So how, how do I honor her, right? We have to sometimes, those who are older and, and moms, you know, been out of the house for a long time, we have to really perhaps think outside of the box of how we can still praise her. Now, none of us are perfect, right? I'm not a perfect dad. We have a perfect Heavenly Father. And so we can never use it as an excuse. Well, I didn't grow up in a good home. I didn't even have Christian parents. We can't use that as an excuse. There's got to be something that we can praise mom for, even if she wasn't a believer. There's got to be something that we can praise dad for, even if he wasn't a believer. Honor their memory, even if they're still not alive. Husband, immediate family. Children, immediate family. And then... Lastly, I really think from verse 31, she's honored throughout her community as well. She's honored outside of her family. So what does it say in verse 31? Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her where? In the gates. So not now in the home, but talking about out, outside in the community. So she is honored throughout her community. She has a sphere of influence. 
And then you know it reminds me of Matthew 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Here's a woman who lets her life shine even outside of the home as well. I want to point us to an example in Acts chapter 9 and verse 36. So if we could just turn there for just a moment, I'll just read a few verses. Here's a follower of Jesus. We know that because here's a woman, and she is described as not only being uh, from Joppa, but she's described in Acts 9 36 as being a certain disciple. Doesn't mean she was one of the twelve, but she was a follower of Jesus, right? She was not one of the apostles, she was a disciple of Jesus. So that what is a disciple? It's someone who is who is a follower of Jesus. They're a learner and they're also a reproducer, right? Disciples making disciples. That's what we should be concerned with as well. So here was this woman in verse uh, 36 named Tabitha, which is by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works. Full of good works, right? Remember what Proverbs 10, 31 says, let her own works praise her in the gates. So she was full of good works, full of doing things, alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, it was just a few miles away, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. All right, so she died, Dorcas died. She was sick, then she died, and now they go get Peter. And Peter arose, verse 39, and went with them when he was come. They brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats. Now we kind of know, what, what did this woman do? What was she full of? Full of good works and arms deeds. All right, what does that mean? What does that include? Well, here's all of these, these widows, right? And by the way, the Bible does not say that these were all believing widows. It doesn't say that. She was full of good work. She was full of alms deeds. And now all of these widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. Yet it doesn't say that they were all believing widows. And I tend to think that perhaps many, if not most, were not believers. They were just people in the community that she knew, that she reached out to as a disciple wanting to reproduce herself. Disciples making disciples. And so she had a ministry. She, she had something going on even outside, perhaps, of her local church. So Peter you know, performed a miracle. Peter put them all forth, kneeled down, prayed, and turning him to uh, the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. So here's a miracle performed. But I'm primarily wanting us to notice how Dorcas lived. She was full of these good works. And then at her death, widows stood by, weeping and showing all of the good works, right? The things that, that Dorcas had done while she was with them. The coats and the garments that she would have helped make, Right? So one way, one way that we get praise should be by husbands, by men in the house, praising your wife for all their accomplishments. The children praise their mom and dad by obeying, by honoring their father and their mother. But now even those in the community, even those in the community. So think about it this way. Who do I have that's outside the church who will be my friend, right? Even if they don't get saved. I've talked to them about the Lord and I've witnessed to them many times and they still reject, but they still want to befriend me. They still want to be friends with me, right? Who do I have outside the church that's my friend? Now, they're not saved yet, but I'm praying for them. I'm ministering to them. How am I living? I'm living in the fear of God. I'm wanting to obey Him. And there, there will be, again, as Matthew 5, 16, I've already quoted, there will be some good works for the Christian. We're not saved by our good works. We're saved by God's grace through faith alone in Christ alone. We're saved by repenting of our sin, turning from our sin and trusting in Christ alone and what He did for us on the cross of Calvary to save us from our sins. We're not saved by good works. But we will have good works. And they'll be evident men and women in the home and children. It will be evident in the home. 
But as in the case of Dorcas, they were also evident outside the home as well. I wonder this from this passage, but I've mentioned this before. Who will come to our funeral that's not from this church? That's kind of what was going on here. She died, right? Peter was going to raise her back to life, but it's kind of go, what's going on. They, the, the widows didn't know this. They were just showing all of her good deeds, all that she did. They didn't know that Peter was going to do this, that God was going to allow this tremendous miracle that, that Dorcas would be raised from the dead. They didn't know. But they did know what she did for them while she was alive. Who will come to my funeral that's not from this church? Will anybody come? Will anybody come that I've witnessed to, that I've prayed for? And maybe they, they, they rejected Christ. Maybe they blasphemed Christ in my face. But they still said, hey, can we get together for coffee next week? You know, they still, they still like me. <laughs> they still want to get together with me. Do we have any friends like that? As disciples, hopefully making disciples, we should, church. We should. We should be praying for the lost around us. We should be getting together with them as much as possible. I understand we can't do everything that they do, right? We shouldn't. But what can we do to minister to those outside the church, to show others, oh, we are different. I mean, we're going to go and help someone. We're going to go and minister to someone who maybe doesn't even come to our church, and we're praying for them, though. They're not saved, and so we're going to go and maybe help them if we can and point them to the Lord. Who knows? Can I ask another question regarding this account with Dorcas? Who knows that you love them no matter what? And again, primarily here at this point, those outside the church. Who knows that you love them? You're going to be there. You're going to help them. You're there for them no matter what. What will people remember me for? Living in the fear of the Lord. Living in the fear of the Lord means hating sin. It means hating sin and wanting to obey the Lord. Christian, are you obeying Him? Do you fear displeasing Him? I, I want to obey God. It's hard sometimes, right? People are telling me you shouldn't do this. It's, 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 not, it's not something you should do. You should maybe get back at somebody for what they did to you. But Lord, that doesn't sound right and it's not. And so you get your, into your Bible and you read it and you say, this is how God wants me to live. So help me to walk, as we've already read from Acts, to walk in the fear of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for believers who are godly testimonies, they're godly examples to the younger generation of fearing the Lord even when times are tough, even when the enemies assail, the challenges are there, the health challenges are there, the physical limitations are there, they fear the Lord. They put you first, priority. Lord, perhaps one, one area that maybe some Christians need to get right on today is the area of prioritizing the wrong thing. There's nothing wrong with looking nice, of course. Nothing wrong with ensuring that you look nice. But Lord, often we do prioritize the wrong thing. Maybe the wrong person. So Father, we need your help. We ask that you would help us to walk in the fear of the Lord. That we would daily fear displeasing you. Lord, we do thank you Again, for the godly moms, for the godly dads that do walk in the fear of the Lord and they're an encouragement to us. We thank you for them. Lord, help us to live in the fear of the Lord. And that's going to change how we live. It's going to change how we act toward our wives. It's going to make us praise them and not be critical of them regardless of what they look like, regardless of, of how they are different than any other woman we have ever known. It's going to make us praise them. So God, forgive us for being critical of the wives that you would get, have given to us. Help us to put as a priority 
Not ourselves, not our flesh. But help us to put you first. And truly desire to honor you and love you as we should. Let's take just a few moments of silent prayer at this time. Perhaps the Lord has highlighted maybe an area in your life that you just need to confess something, some sin. Maybe it's a sin, men, that we need to bring up to our wives and we just need to say, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? I was wrong. Maybe we need to talk to the Lord at this time. Let's take a few moments. Father, we love you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for loving us first while we were yet sinners. Again, Lord, it is our prayer. If there is an, any person in here this morning that does not know you as their Lord and personal Savior, that they would talk to someone, that they would meet with, with uh, anyone from our church that we might be able to show them from your word how they might be rescued from sin and restored to, to God, our Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, that today would be the, the day of salvation for someone. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We pray that as we leave from this place, we would be excited about serving you, be thankful for all of your blessings to us. And help us, Lord, as we get ready to, uh, again, to spend a wonderful afternoon, perhaps with, with a mom or, or with our wives. We pray that we would be a blessing and an encouragement to them. And then, Lord, bring us back, uh, bring us back please, tonight for our, our fellowships and our youth Sunday school as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Jacob, would you please come and lead us in our closing hymn? <laughs> Turn in your hymnals to number 393. We'll stand together as we sing all four verses of number 393. Take my life and let it